My brothers and sisters, more importantly, we are back with a very special guest. How are you doing, Wayne? Great, Hecubus. How are you doing this evening? Oh, it is so amazing to have you on the show. I'm doing amazing. How could I not be? I have royalty on my show. Oh, my gosh. I only wish. Hey, it's an honor to be here with you, my friend. Dude, it's not seriously, every day you get in a bunker, you know. It's been taken. For, it's taken forever for us to get together. I knew it was going to happen someday. I knew it was going to happen someday. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And you're down in you're down in oh, Kentucky. Okay. So how are things in Kentucky? How's the weather down there? Oh well, today it started off a little bit drippy and uh, cleared up. We got to go outside do a little work today, and then we got some storms going to move in here for too long. So. That's yes. all right. How I about was, how about your way? I was wondering about that. I was wondering if you were catching any of the the weird storm action that's going on, on the east side there. We're we're hot here, which is not good. I don't like it hot. <laughs> if, <laughs> it's in the nineties again for like another third week. I I, I don't like nineties. Uh, if I wanted nineties, I'd be down in always sunny Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> that's right, man. That's right. But no, it's it's. Crazy weather we've had this summer here, man. This, it is. It is. It's throwing things it off. Really, right. really is. Now, I can't wait for 2020 to be over. <laughs> right? Can't we all? Exactly. <laughs> At, you know, in March, we're like, God, the month of March is over. And we're like, oh, God, I thought the whole year was over. You know? Yeah, the first quarter was the longest, I think, quarter of any year ever. And then it just kept going. It's just been a really long week. That's all. It's it's we are, We're on like Tuesday, I feel like, of our year week. You know, we haven't even hit hump day yet. <laughs> <laughs> that's right that's right I haven't even hit it so what have well, you been doing exciting today uh i've been pruning a lot of things and moving mulch that was my <laughs> that was my my day out in that wonderful heat that's how i know how hot it was because i was like wait how hot is it because i shouldn't be sweating this much normally how'd those 50 yards go you said last week you had one you had 50 yards yeah. or something yeah i moved them all we got another 20 in for this week so we're, we're redoing the entire property. It's a, uh, we're not mulching the entire, we're not doing barking and mulching on the entire 12 acres that there are on the property, but, but, uh, it feels like it. <laughs> I bet it does doing it a wheelbarrow all the time. I know you said you had limited access. Yeah. And it's all, it's all into uh pre existing plant beds and things like that. So you can't just dump the barrow. You gotta, you know, move it in slowly around the plant. Strategic plants. placement. Oh yeah. Yeah. It makes it fun. It does. Hey, it's not for everybody. You know? No, that's for sure. That's for sure. <laughs> I, I keep thinking about that myself. I'm like, is this, what am I doing? What, <laughs> what, what did you do to deserve this penance, right? You know, but it, it's all good because I think everybody in this industry, you have those moments that you're like, why am I doing this? But then you thankfully have all the other moments who, that are hopefully more than the, the negatives where you're like, this is why I do this, you know? So yeah, that's right. It's so, like, you know, when you get to, Go do what you like to do and get out on your, whatever it is you like to have fun, whether it's reading or getting on a boat or, you know, go yeah. camping. Some people like to fish. With this crazy weather, are you guys, so down there with all the, the weird weather this year, are you having impacts on business-wise because of it? Any, well, you know, it's it's been really crazy. I mean, I love fertilization and weed control, you know. Uh, Matt Martin keeps us all straight on that with his show, but right, <laughs> man, I tell you what, it's just, it seems like every year you have to tell your customers we're having an unusual year, but it, it's, but it just seems like, you know, our brown patch problems this year on fescue lawns and it's just crazy. We've just, the humidity has been crazy. Nighttime temperatures above 70 Ugh, and man, you know, no. <laughs> yards looking like hell. And it's going to, I think it's going to be another year of what I call the customer carousel. And that's okay. where they hop off of our business and get on yours and yours come to me. And, you know, yeah, they just yeah, yeah. keep making that circle. You know, every few years we have the customer carousel that takes place. And, you know, I think this is probably going to be one of these years. That's you know? an interesting way to look at it. I, I, I mean, once you said that, it made sense to me, but I hadn't heard it re referred to me that way, a customer carousel of that type so, of thing. That makes sense. They just hop on one horse this year and get off and get yeah. back on another one when they get back on the merry-go-round, you know. I always say, heck of us, that, you know, customers are temporary stops. For sure. A lot of a lot of business owners don't like to believe that. Yeah. And their pride gets in the way when they lose an account and say, heck of us, stow that account. <laughs> <You know? laughs> 
you just didn't steal that account, <laughs> man. What'd you do to lose it? You know? Well, well and I think that, yeah, I think that a lot of, there's a lot of guys out there that I know and, and not just in, in landscaping, but just across the board where they, you get a customer and you're like, okay, I got that customer. And somehow they're like yours and their property and you don't have to worry about them anymore. It's like, no, yeah. that's, that was the easy part. <laughs> That, the easy right. part is getting them. The hard part is keeping them. <laughs> that's right. You know, my dad used to always say in selling that, yes, just uh, starts the relationship. You know, it, oh, yeah. it's, it's, that's a good, yeah, it I starts like that. the relationship. But, uh, you know, if you want to consummate the relationship, then it's service after the sell. And as simple as that is, and we've all heard it a million times, you know, we've all had those customers that, you know, hey, they're around 7, 8, 10, 15, 20 years. And all of a sudden you get that phone call. Yeah. That, hey, man, we're, we're going with somebody else. And you, you forget that. Uh, I think sometimes we get complacent. Oh, absolutely. I can totally see. And you get, when well, you get frenzy too, that's one of those things that I don't think many business owners keep on their list of, of things to do. They're always looking at, you know, expenses and this and that and growing the business and all those other items. But they, very few of them that I know have that category of, customer care, checking up on the customer, you know, where, yeah, and I, right. obviously they're going to check up on the newer customers or customers met, but like you said, you get that, that veteran customer who's, who's been with you forever. You and you're just kind of like, yeah, I don't even have to worry about them because they love what I do. And you, and then suddenly yeah. you lose them because you assume they were going to be there. You just thought they were going to be there. It's the, I think it's, it, it, it's probably a weird analogy kind of us, but we'll keep it clean, but you know, <laughs> it's, <laughs> But no, it, seriously, it's it's kind of like your marriage, you know. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. it, you started out. Think about it when you you know when you first start dating somebody, man. You just can't you just can't see them enough. You can't take them out enough. You can't buy them flowers enough. Yeah. <laughs> and then you get married, and slowly but surely, you get a child or two or three or whatever. And all of a sudden, your date night's gone, and you're not sending flowers, and you're not telling them you love them, and and then we get divorced, and yeah. Uh, I think our uh, that same thing happens with our businesses. The longer that customer stays around, I'm like you. I, there needs to be a line item on your on your budget that says, "Hey, I save yep. customers." Yep. You know, something. Call yeah, a reminder you on your uh, when you know, assuming that that folks, in the, if they don't have any kind of CRM, they should. You know, any kind of control mechanism for you know having their contacts. Right. All those things have that little date in there where you can put something in, like have you contact them in two weeks? You know, it'll pop up a reminder. You know, yep, just something just to say hi, like, Hey, just wanted to make sure everything's still good. You liking everything, you know, that type of stuff. And they might not respond or they might respond with just a, yeah, sure. Great. But at least then they knew you, you reached out. I know we, we try to send evaluations out. Uh, Personal contracts contact is great. We know that, you know, that not who, but everybody does, but at least we try to make a, a digital contact with, Hey, how's our service? Yeah. You know, a couple times a year, you know, because what we found, you know, what we found, talk about saving customers. Yeah. We found that, uh, w- you know, a lot of times we just get fired. You know, a customer calls up and they've, they've already made a decision to change. Yeah. And, you know, so you really don't have a chance to save them per se. Mm-hmm. But uh, so, so many, many years ago, we implemented an evaluation system within our company where, you know, we send out an evaluation a couple times a year and uh, just asking our customers, how are we doing? Just that simple. How are we doing? You know, and and we get, a, it's amazing the feedback we get that somebody that never called and complained that says, things are going pretty good, but you know the trimming's a little this or the blowing's okay. a little this. Or, yeah. And we found that that goes a long way toward creating additional loyalty. Not only that we do that, but when we, you know, follow up with a complaint because we're looking, that's, that's yeah. what we're looking for oh, yeah. on those evaluations. We're not looking for Google reviews, you know, <laughs> that tell us how great we are. We're looking for things that <laughs> right. say how bad we are. Yeah. We're, you know, the improvements. Yeah. Where you still got a chance to save it and fix it. Yeah, so, absolutely. Well, that's where, know, when, you know, in my, before I got into landscaping, I mean, I've kind of always been in landscaping, but not as a, you know, a full on thing, my, my entire career. And, and when, Back before, when I was in hospitality, I did I did a lot of stuff in hospitality. And one of the greatest mentors I had in hospitality told me once, he said, the customer's perception is our reality. Like, it doesn't matter what you think they should think. 
whatever they are thinking is our reality. That's what we have to deal with, you know. And I think that's that, right. That guys, that's a great, that's a great way of putting it. Yeah, guys get too, you know, too set into the everything's fine, and then bam, all of a sudden you've got the, you've got this person dropping you, and you don't know why. You know, and, and you can come up right. with a million reasons in your head. Oh, well, they're this or that's that, that. But it doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, it's it's there. You know, that's the reality of it. So I had to write that down. I'm going <laughs> to use that. Oh, I, 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 I heard that first. This has been I heard that first in 2003. I, I remember it September of 2003. It was actually September 13th or 14th. You know, something like I mean, I mean that, it's it's been that long. And I still as soon as I remember something about a complaint, I always think of of that uh, that phrase the the customer's perception is our reality it is exactly right you know it's it, another way that i've thought about it and said it especially from a selling perspective is you know j- just simply that people buy for what they think they're going to get out of something they know mm-hmm. the perceived value and that yes. falls right into that is oh, perfect yeah. absolutely what their perception is of us is what it is whether it is or not wrong or right but if that perception is those guys do a great job, even though we know we don't, <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's all that matters yeah. that they think we do. Well, it is, right? you know, the I same, mean, that same time, like you're talking about brown patches in the fescue, you know, if you're, if you're having, and obviously it's not going to work every time, but if you're having a conversation with a customer and they're saying, well, how can, you know, I've got these brown patches. If you say, oh, well, you know, it's, it's one of those years and leave it at that. You know, versus trying, you know, maybe maybe that'll work for those customers, but each in the customer, each customer is different. That's the other part of it is that right. each customer you have, you know, has that different perception of it. So maybe the next person is wanting to understand the science of it, of why. Yeah, it's not. That's you know, why, yeah, why? And if you want to melt their brain, it's you're just like, hey, just listen to Matt Martin. <laughs> I really think today I lost a customer over that. I'm not sure, but I really think so because. Their perception, this is exactly it, what you're talking about. You know, their perception was, well, when I called into your office, they said the brown spots would be gone if I took the fungicide. And they're not. And I know we didn't tell them that. You know, I, I just right, know right, yeah, we yeah, didn't yeah, say sure. that. But in their mind, that's what they heard. Yeah. You know, to, to your point, yeah. their perception <laughs> was, hey, I'll pay for this fungicide. My brown spots are going away. No, we're going to check the fungus is what it'll do if the, the brown spots right. may come back if it's not dead. But if it's dead, we're going to have to reseed. Yeah. You know? I know you, that's what the message was, but sure. their perception. <laughs> yeah, to, yeah they just, they, they didn't perceive it quite. And so it, you know, and gosh, sometimes I, it's hard to be able to, you can't switch gears all of a sudden, but sometimes, you know, it's depending on the customer. That's when you reach back out to them and say, hey, just want to let you know, did some follow-up. Here it is. If you want to stay with the same person, that's fine. I just wanted to give you some extra follow-up, and then maybe that'll, you know, key them into, if they don't come back right back to you, maybe it'll be on the next car- car- side, carousel uh, you know, ride. <laughs> and I, I just hope I just hope our listeners tonight are thinking as hard about this as I am. Because I'll tell you what, as simple as that was, man, That I mean, that is exactly right. We spend thousands of dollars to generate new business, right? Every mm-hmm. one of us. Yeah when we could spend hundreds of dollars to save what we got, you know, yeah. going back to your point. So yeah, just man, a little, I'm glad I got on here time. tonight. With you, <laughs> well, it's what we do in the bunker, man. That's what we do in the bunker. <laughs> That's right, man. <laughs> oh, speaking of doing things, I got to, we got to step off for a quick little breaks. <laughs> All right. Hang with me. We'll be back in one minute, 38.6 seconds here, brothers and sisters on Turf Up Radio. It's your industry, it's your station, but it's my show. This is Hecubus and Nightcap. We are with Wayne Vols. He is from Profits Unlimited, the man, the myth, the legend. Back in just a little bit. And just like that, we're back with, wait, you know, Wayne, I just realized, Wayne, Vols, and that's V-O-L-Z. Not, that's not the right. Volts kind, even though, even though I always call him Volts because he and his entire family have so much energy that it's all about the voltage. So... <laughs> <laughs> but, but Profits Unlimited, so I, at the very beginning, I actually, so I introduced you, but I didn't give you a chance to explain all the things you do. So if you could take a second to, to do that and let people know how to find you, that'd be awesome. All right. Well, I'd be happy to do that. I've got a lawn and landscaping business in Louisville, Kentucky. We've had that for 41 years this year. and We've been lucky enough to surround ourselves with some really good help along the way and currently as well. And I think that's what we really attribute our success to. 
is just having good people around us. And But 1990, Hecabus, I started another company called Profits Unlimited. And uh, that we started that because we had just made mistake after mistake after mistake. We had no idea why we were charging what we were charging. We didn't have any. We were very good at working hard, but we weren't very good at working smart, and we weren't making any money. And when we finally realized what was broke for our company was the fact that we had no methodology okay. on what, why we charge what we charged. And then when we finally implemented a very simple to utilize methodology, and that happened in 1987, uh, three years later, I said, you know, there's a lot of need for this across the country. There's a lot of companies, you know, in North America as a whole that are yeah. just like us struggling to make payroll, struggling to pay their vendors, struggling on every aspect that wonder how you're going to get through the winter. And we said, we need to take this message to everybody that, Hey, you just need to fine tune your business a little bit. It's not always about how many accounts you have. Let's let's, let's (laughs) get some, you know, yeah. Cause you know, I I hear that so much from people that, Hey, I want to get to a hundred thousand or I want to get to 500,000 or I want to get to a million or, you know, whatever the goal may be, you know, we have that set, but do we know what kind of profit margin we're going to have on that dollar range that we want to get to or any profit at all? Because Wayne's Lawn Service in 1987, I'll tell you straight up, man, we were doing $300,000 a year and losing money. I mean, <laughs> right. two, two, two crews. We had two crews going. I ran a crew. My brother ran a crew. And at the end of the day, you know, so when guys, you know, tell me they're doing X number of dollars a year, I don't care how much you're doing. Yeah. How much are you keeping? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a, yeah, you know? absolutely. And I think that's the important thing that we all get lost in is it's not the dollar volume we're doing. So we help companies with the bidding side of their business, the number side. The, the numbers has been the big thing everybody refers to now is know your numbers. Yeah. And, uh, that, you know, that we were talking that in 1990. You basically know why you charge what you charge, and everything else is easy. You know, once we defined who we were and what we needed to charge, it helped us go out and pick the right clientele for our customer. So all of a sudden, you know, we weren't everything to everybody. We were trying to be something to somebody, but we had a reason of why we were marketing a certain type of clientele now. You know, so, and I say this with all due respect, the little old lady on social security uh, was no longer our customer because what if we all heard a million times with that, you know, or I'm on a fixed income, right? Yep. How many times have I'm on a fixed income? Well, I understand that, but last time I looked at my company name, it says lawn service. It's a service we offer. Yes, very much. You know, very few people need any of us. They want us. And, you know, from a selling and a business perspective, when people want something, they're willing to pay more for something that they want than versus what they need. So yeah. the little old lady on Social Security needs her grass cut. The, the person out residentially that has a nice home and a boat and a lake yeah. house or tennis clubs or whatever it is they like to do, they want somebody to cut their grass so they got their free time back. Yeah. I say all the time, we sell free time. We don't sell lawn service. We sell free time. That's a good way to look at it. I like residentially. See, see there you go. Now, now you just gave me one. See, we shared. You know, I gave you a phrase. It. You gave me a phrase. <laughs> so, <laughs> I like that. I never did tell sell you how to get time. a hold of us, but uh, hey, they, they, they find us on Perfs Up Radio. We got our podcast there. We got a live show. It's going to start very, very soon there. We're working out some internet issues. I think we got worked out now for that to start. So. We'll, we'll be available at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Turf Up Radio, nice. and uh, with a show called Profit Time. So I'll be I'll be fitting in a slot with you guys, so we can help all of us. You know you and Adam. Is that going to be a? Is that a? Is it a one hour or two hour? One hour. One hour. Okay. So, going to do a one hour one hour show and try to just help uh, play some good music like you do. And <laughs> honestly, heck of us, I listen to you a lot. Cause you're really good. And Matt Martin and I mean, you know, Eric Jones, you guys have got great shows and I listen to y'all because seriously, I want to emulate you all because y'all sound really good and you make it fun. 
and that's well, what that's, I want to. Yeah, and I, I I do the same thing with the other guys too. I I'm listening to everybody all the time, trying to figure out like, oh, they they did that or they did that, you know, and you know, just yeah. trying to do new things. And I I feel you on the internet part of it. I feel you. Being in a bunker is no fun. <laughs> You know, hey, look, look at you guys and see what you're doing and try to emulate that. I, you know, I sincerely mean that. I, that's, I think we do that with our businesses too. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. Know, we look at our competitors and you guys aren't competitors, but from a business perspective, I look at my competitors and we all should. Hey, what do they do? What don't they do? They're all good at something. We're good at something, but let's figure out what we do different, better than they do. Let's yeah. sell that. Yeah. That's how you have to, you have to be able to. Well, that's exactly to the sales process because when you have that conversation with a potential customer and they say, well, I already have someone who does my lawn, you can't just say, well, we do it better because yeah. they're like, well, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah. What, you know. I'm happy with what I have now. So if you do it better, what yeah. is that? <laughs> we make tall grass short, man. Everybody does, you know. <laughs> oh, kill some weeds or whatever it is that we do. But uh, it, it's, it's a great business and, and I really enjoy the mix of, Lawn service and profits unlimited because just just today I got to talk to three three different companies at a guy in Kansas, Illinois, and Idaho that I talked to today. Just and you know it doesn't matter where somebody's at. Yeah. It, it's 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 very very similar in what we're doing, and and the and the the what's broke for most of our companies, and that's why profits unlimited is there. Is most most of what's broke is knowing why we charge what we charge, a professional proposal, and a very effective service agreement in place. Because, you know, every one of us in this industry, whether we do it part-time or full-time, I think we should position ourselves and our companies for something that somebody wants to buy. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. It's just that simple. At the end of the day, somebody's going to sell Wayne's Lawn Service, whether it's me or my son or my daughter or whoever it is, at some point in time, this company will sell. And what we do in the meantime to make that a value for somebody, and I think that's how we all need to look at our businesses. Uh, for too many years, I looked at it as a, I created a job for myself. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And not, not, a, not a business to sell. And, you know, so regardless of what type of service we're all in, you know, I know we're very diversified as an industry. I think the key for all of us is to let's build something that somebody else wants. And we're back to that word want, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> and when they want it, they're willing yeah. to pay for it. So. Yeah. Well, that's where the money, that's where it really is at. I mean, you can pick up those, those accounts and the, you know, the, the fixed income accounts, which to me, like, it, it's always, that was always interesting to me because I'm like, I'm pretty much on a fixed income. I know what I'm getting paid more or less, you know? And that, but there's that, that certain, that certain mindset of fixed income that comes with that type of scenario where that's right. It's, you know, I, I'm expecting a discount for this service because of this situation. And, and then you're, you're doing, you're doing another lawn for, for less than you would the others because somehow you think it's making value for you. And I don't, I get the heartfelt part of it. I honestly do. And it, you know, and that cheers to anybody who's out there doing that type of thing, you know, where they're like, Hey, I feel for you. Let me do this for you. But you can't build a business on that though. Right. Not and it's not, though. you know, people, you know, I don't want anybody to think I'm callous. Oh, not at all. No. You know, but it's at the end of the day, we're running a business. And until you decide that that's what you want to run as a business that, you know, that's what it needs to be. I mean, it's yeah. not that we don't feel for Miss Smith on social security or the, and, the, the single parent that that becomes a bigger play now than even the fixed income is why I'm a single parent. Yeah. I, I, oh yeah. Yeah. I get, I get that. But at the, again, at the end of the day, that doesn't make it any less expensive for me to send a crew to your house to mow your yard. Yeah. And that's the part of it is you have to, there's a, and it's a fine balance too. It's such a fine balance between the emotional side of it where you, you want to be, you know, you want to be human, but, it, but you got to be a business owner at the same time. Right, and a lot of that means you got to take the emotion out of it because it's all about that bottom line at the end of the day. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it is. Yeah, and you it's all about that, that bottom line. That fine. That's it. That you know that fine line you referred to just then reminds me of something. I always, I always say, you know, we got to remember who's running our companies. Is it us, or is it our clients? Yeah. And there is a very fine line. We don't have a company without the clients, 
But looking back at what we talked about a few minutes ago, clients are temporary stops. Right. Some of them stop for 20 or 30 years, but some of them stop for one or two years. So we, our, our business model and our focus has to be on what's right for us and our companies individually. Everybody listening to us tonight, you know, what's best for your company? Yeah. Not your customer. And, and I don't mean that in a bad way at all. I don't hope you don't get a bunch oh, of no. <laughs> no, and it absolutely doesn't come across. And I think, I think anybody listening understands the, the idea that, you know, you have to be able to make those decisions and, and the ones who, if you're out there listening right now and you're like, well, maybe that's me, check out profits unlimited. They can help you. <laughs> because, you know, yeah. if you're, if you're having, if you're having and hawing and you're having doubts about what's going on or, and there's, see, here's the other thing too. And it's been interesting since I've been on with Turf Up radio that, I, you know, and, and Geo Ripper, because I obviously I, doing a lot of social media and things like that, I see a lot of conversation guys are having. And I see that for the, there's a lot of times in this industry where there's, there's a lot of judgment happening, where someone asks a question about right. something and somebody who's new and says, hey, and they go out to one of these groups on Facebook, for instance, and says, hey, what do you guys charge for this? I'm new to the business. And they're just trying to do it. And, and yeah, that's a bad way about going about just, you know, asking that question. But it's interesting to me that there's there's like a we have this this family in in the landscaping industry in the green industry, but at the same time there's a lot of judgment from the guys who've been in for a while to the newer guys, and that's why I love about Turf Soap Radio is that we are the kind of the bridge of that gap because nobody here we have so much knowledge. I mean, you have so many years of experience. Everybody else on the show has so many years. I mean, it would take me another 15 minutes just to explain all the different shows we have, which right. is why you should go to TurfSubRadio.com to check out all of our shows. And, but also, it's, it's just amazing to me that there is that family here that we have that we've joined where we're saying, hey, it's okay. Come to us. Ask us questions. No judgment. We'll get you yeah. on the right track. You know, we're, it's we're looking to help It's a judgment-free zone. It really is. You know, you're, you're right, heck of us. It's, and the knowledge that you know, our listeners get between, you know, Eric and you and Matt Martin and gosh, JJ. And, I mean, just everybody. I mean, you literally have hundreds of years of knowledge yeah. that's being shared in a format that care about people and yes. your business yeah, being successful. Absolutely. You know, it's not about, well, Jesus, he's a dumb moron. You know, <laughs> right. I believe you asked that question, you know, Hell, I wish I had something to listen to like this back in 1987. Oh, yeah, you know, for you sure. Know, where, I mean, we didn't even have social media, and I'm probably glad for a lot of what you read on social media. Well, that yeah, there's that. <laughs> you know, I don't know. But, <laughs> but you know, yeah. as an industry, one thing's for sure, we, our failure rates are incredible. You know, they're staggering when you look at other industries across the country. And it's only because we don't know what we don't know about pricing our jobs. Well, do you have, okay. So, so we got to do a break. I know I asked you to come on for a half hour. Do you have just a few more minutes so we can go over that part of it? Cause oh. you brought up a really oh, good yeah. point there. Yeah. Okay. Let me hit, hit a break real quick and then we'll be right back with Wayne Vols, the man, the myth, myth, the legend. I almost skipped over the myths part. I was still in the conceptions of the, Last name, Wayne Volz, because I always want to say Volz because he's high electricity, high energy. That's V-O-L-Z. Wayne Volz, check him out on TurfsUpRadio.com. Also, check him out at Profits Unlimited, Profits.Unlimited on Instagram and Profits Unlimited on Facebook and also on YouTube and anywhere else where there's, there's – I think he's going to get a TikTok going here pretty soon. All right, and we are back with Wayne. Sir, this is amazing. It's like I, I'm like – I. I need to have, do I have like a royalty thing? I have to have a noise for royalty somewhere in my, for royalty, my, please, my happiness. Please. Thing. Now, I'm not royalty. Heck of a sec. You know, I always introduce myself as a lawn guy. <laughs> That's what I am. I mean, you know, 41 years of doing this, you know, it's funny. You, you go talk somewhere, you know, when we used to be able to go talk at state association. Right, yeah, yeah. But uh, <laughs> they'd always ask for a bow, you know, and, I always said, I always sent them a really short one. And, you know, a lot of times they would say, well, you got anything in more depth? And so then I got to where I'd send two, one, two, a long one and a short one. But 
when they would introduce me uh, to speak, I'd always say, you know, I'm not going to read this vowel. They don't need to read the vowel. I'm a lawn guy. Yeah. You know, I'm just like you all. <laughs> you know, there's, I hate it. You know, I personally, it just, it's one of my pet peeves. When you got a speaker up there that wants to read 17 pages about how successful they are and how great they are, and, and I understand you need to lay a little foundation. But you know what? Let me listen to your presentation. Then I'll decide if I like you. Oh, yeah. there we go. See, yeah. better knowledge, I, even right there. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's just the way I do it. It doesn't yeah. mean it's right or wrong. I'm sure it's probably not politically correct, you know, but at the end of the day, I, I tell everybody, whether I'm at a dealer or I'm an association or even at the GIE show before where I've spoke, it's just introduce me as the lawn guy and let me make my presentation. I'll tell my story. Yeah. And uh, I think guys appreciate that. I think business, I say guys, women, contractors, business. Sure. Oh, yeah, guys, sure, yeah. You know, they appreciate the fact that you're not up there trying to pat yourself on the back. And, you know, you see yeah. so much of that. Oh, you do? Well, especially in the, you get a, there's been a lot of times even, and it's not only just in this industry, but, you know, all my times in hospitality, we'd be setting out little pamphlets and things for, you know, for in the ballrooms and things for a big presentation or, you know, after the fact that going, you know, when I got into, when I was, you know, got into the green industry and doing things like with, with different shows like GEI and all these other things. And you see these, these, uh, pamphlets for a, a, a talk that's being given and you look at it and there's like this massive paragraph of, you know, titles and other things. And I'm like, oh, okay, but what are they talking about? <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. You know, don't tell me how great you are, you know. Gosh, uh, my dad used to always say, don't tell me, show me. Right. Well, see, and that's why you are royalty to me, because you listen to my show a lot. And I know you do, because you're always like, <laughs> text me and message me, which is awesome, because I love that, because otherwise I'm talking to a wall. But <laughs> actually, just kidding. I have like a little stuffed animal that I talk to. It's a little trick that we used to do back in the radio days, back when I was in uh, the military, of being able to, you know, you have to have a target to focus on kind of thing. But yeah, I've, I've always like, since I got to know, gotten to know you on Turf Up Radio, it's just you and your entire family are so amazing. And it's, and it's a blessing to me to know all of you. And so, you know, it's, it's very humbling for me to have you on my show for well, sure. No, I, I, I appreciate, I appreciate you let me on. Seriously. It does. It means a lot. And, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's honor. It really is. I, I sincerely mean that man to, to have you ask me to be on your show because I know there's a lot of different people you can have on your show. And, but I, I just like to keep it real. And that's what I do with profits unlimited is, you know, when I'm talking to somebody, I like to keep it real and, uh, you know, let, let the, let my client to decide, let them make the decision if what, yeah. how they like that, you know? And, well, that's um, what you have to be because if you're, if you're reaching and you're stretching for something else that you are trying to be to, somehow maybe win a client, then in the long run, I don't see that working out. You know, what's, why do you need that extra stress? Right. You know, if they don't yeah, like who you are, right. if you don't like who they are, then they can move on. You know, that's right. It's, that's, that's right. It's easy to, it's easy to move along, but anyway, no, I do appreciate you letting me come on the show and, Oh, and I, we had fun. I mean, we got to talk about fishing and, <laughs> and see, and that's what we do here in the bunker. Cell. Like it never, there is no, See, this is why I always tell people there's no scripting. Anytime I have a guest on, <laughs> I've had people who have decided not to come on because I told them I wouldn't come up with a list of questions for them. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. I, I just, it's not my style. You know, I'm never, I'm never hurtful. I'm never, I never judge people. We don't do that here in the bunker. <laughs> you know, we just have a conversation. That's what I want it to feel like is that, it's always just a conversation where if you were back in the old days of the rotary phones where you could pick up a line in another room. <laughs> oh yeah. You try listen to in on a conversation. You remember that? Yeah. You, you remember bought, that? Back when I was a kid. So my first, the first thing I did, the first time I saved up money that I remember anyway, the first time I saved up a decent amount of money was to buy a longer phone cord so I could talk to my girlfriend by switching out the phone cord from the one that was hanging on the wall to, to the handset so that I could go into my room with it. <laughs> Instead of standing in the hallway, <laughs> that's, that's hilarious. Oh my God. And I mowed, about I mowed lawns it. to get that. That was my first foray into lawn mowing, into landscaping. Oh, I started mowing lawns to get money for that. Yeah, that's funny. 
A lot of kids don't even remember <laughs> handsets on phones, probably. Or can't even dial them, for that matter. Or a do- Oh, I swear to God, this is a true story. You got a minute still? <laughs> oh, go ahead. Go. Go for it. Go for it. <laughs> we, <laughs> we were, this goes back several years, but one of one of our kids, lucky enough to have four children with my wife, Jane, and one, I don't know, it's probably 25 years ago, one of their friends comes over to the house and we still had a dial phone on the wall, you know, hanging on the wall. Well, the kid went to call their parents and he was pushing the buttons inside the rotary. <laughs> He's like, it ain't working. He didn't know it had to spin it. You know, yep. it didn't have the, ro- he never yep. used a rotary telephone. So, oh, oh gosh. That was you the know. worst part of the rotary too. When you accidentally skipped the number and you had to wait for it to come all the way back. You're like, come on. Come all the way back around. <laughs> then you got to yeah. hang up and then wait for it a second. And yeah, it's, Speaking of kids and babysitting, man, you think Darren watching or listening to us? Oh, I think so. Yeah. Okay. All right. I just want to make sure we or you always do a good job. I want to make sure I do a good job. <laughs> you know, he makes me nervous. So, no, I'm just teasing. No, it's all good. He well, he's probably Darren's a good guy. We're at, he's Darren. at like nine o'clock. Well, you're at nine o'clock too, right? Or close to? Yeah. Yeah. He might exactly. be in bed though. He's yeah. He's already had his warm milk. He's he's in bed. His warm milk and cookie snacks. Yep. Fuzzy, fuzzy slippers with his robe. Yeah. That's yeah. It. With his turfs up radio shorts on. Oh, yeah. Oh, they never, yeah. They're never <laughs> off. <laughs> Pretty it's not sure. Fair to talk about somebody that's in bed when they can't defend themselves. Unless it's Darren. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. He gets it. He gets it. Uh, mm-hmm. No, it's fun. <laughs> no, thanks a lot, heck of us, for having me on, my friend. And anytime, so I'd be happy to come help you fill a time slot. Oh, absolutely. And I'll, yeah, yeah, we will get together many more times, my friend, because this is this has been so much fun. I can't wait to have you on again. But before we go, how can people find you? <laughs> all right. It, 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 it's easy. First of all, start off with Turfs Up Radio. Uh, you can find us there on our podcast there between 2 and 4, and soon to be our, our Profit Time show at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard. But you can also find us at Profits Are Us. It's P-R-O-F-I-T-S-A-R-E-Us. Profits Are Us dot com and any social media uh you can look us up there and daniel my son he takes care of that you can find us on all the social media platforms as well as tiktok so perfect oh tiktok we, wait what we might get knocked off tiktok you're you're, you're going on tick when's i haven't seen a tiktok from you when is that haven't happening you? you need to hit daniel on that yeah he, he he did or he started that and he might have stopped now that you know, we got some issues going with TikTok. Oh, it's going to happen. It's going to yeah. happen. Come Check on. it out. Heck of us. We got we to gotta get on him next time you're, you're talking to him. Yeah, I need to radio. see, I need to see some, I need to see some, uh, some weight room TikToks and some Profits Unlimited TikToks. That's right. And some pump station. I mean, come on, come on. We'll do it. So, hey, hey thanks a lot again. And we'll talk to you anytime, my friend. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Give everyone in your family hugs for me. I appreciate you, sir, so much. I am blessed to have you on my show and we're going to do it again soon. Thank Thank you. you. Appreciate it.